Hello my crafty friends. Um, this video tutorial is to teach you how I made um, these handmade roses here. Um, they are hand sewn. They're very easy to do by simply following uh, three steps. And um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. As you can see, you can do them in a two-tone type deal or a solid one. At first I'm going to show you how to do the solid one. Okay. So the first thing you want to do um, depending on how big you want. Um, these, the larger ones is a six inch uh, square and the smaller one is a four inch square is what we're working with right now. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to get your square and make sure that it lines up from point to point. It's very important that you have the points here. And then you're just going to take your finger, depending on the type of fabric you use, you can do this by finger pressing um, if you want. You can use your iron. But I just simply uh, finger press so that I can get a registration line to where I need to do my stitching. Okay. So now that I have it pressed, I can now see a definite line. Okay. You're going to get needle and thread and you're going to tie your thread uh, knot at the end and we're simply going to do a running stitch. Now I go through and I do three standard stitches and then I begin my running stitch and I stitch along that line. Uh, to stay accurate uh, with the line I would suggest doing smaller increments like you see me doing here. So I am going to just go down this line like so and of course it all depends on how many stitches you can get on your your um, needle depending on what needle you use. I like using smaller needles because I have more control of my stitches rather than longer needles. Okay, one more. Um, I sewed way before I started paper crafting. So um, this is like natural to me. So um, you're going, you've done your running stitch down the center, okay? Now you're going to leave a tail off because you're going to use this to be pulling, okay? There you go. And you're going to leave that off and then you're going to reload your needle again with another piece of thread. Let me get my needle going here. Again, you're going to just take your thread. I like to double up on my thread. Um, that's just me. Okay, I just tied my knot. Now I'm going to feed it right through the needle. Okay. And then what I do to keep the to get the most out of my thread and to keep it to falling off the needle is once I got the loop through, is I take the needle and I feed it right through that loop and pull and it's it's tied onto the needle like that. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to fold the material back in half and you're going to start at one end. I like to start at the end where I had started before and you're going to do three standard stitches. Just like so. And then with the two, with the sides together, you are going to do another running stitch. Okay. I'm using a synthetic type blue jean material. Um, I'm sure you can use regular blue jeans, any old blue jeans you want to use. All right. There we go. Again, you're just going to snip off the tail leave you room for you to pull. So you've got two tails right there. And you've got this open pocket right here. Now we're going to reload our needle again. Okay. You're going to pull. 
now if you're going to make a lot of these um, I would suggest getting you about three needles re with a lot of thread on them ready to um, do this so you don't have to stop and reload stop and reload but this is for demonstration purposes and I wanted to show you how I do this um, this is a rosette style uh, hand sewn uh, flower um, it's been out for a very long time there are many variations to it but this is mine so all right as you see I started in the center of one of the sides of the pocket here and now I'm going to do a running stitch all the way around the opening okay so you're just going to run a running stitch all the way around Make sure you don't get then right here you just want to pull a little bit and make sure that you don't get your other stitches like I just did caught up in your other ones It'll take a little practice, but you can do it. I have faith. All right, and then you're going to continue the running stitch. Now you should be right back to where you had begun. Now leave your needle on your uh, string you're not going to cut it off this time as you can see you will have one string in the middle and two strings here on the sides on the points like that okay now to create this flower you're going to do this like you would a pair of socks or putting on you're going to put your thumbs down in the center here and you're going to pull that point right to the center like that as you can see it's starting to develop the rows okay now on the one with the needle you're not pulling yet you're going to pull the bottom the two side ones like this you're going to pull on this side a little bit and then you're going to pull on this side a little bit okay then you're going to flip all of this down and you're going to do the same thing you're going to pull a little bit and you can pull on the needle one just a little to help you mold the flower okay There you go. Now, what I like to do, leave my needle part here, is take the two side pulls and I like to knot them so that the pulled fabric will stay in place like that. Okay, and then I'm going to snip the excess off. So now all I have is the string left with the needle and you're just going to pull and now what I like to do is to take my needle and thread and stitch the layers down like this just go around and stitch them down 
or you can glue them down but I already have the thread here so I'm just going to stitch them down like this okay see now to lock this stitch down you're going to go through and before you completely pull it you see the loop here you're going to run your needle right through that loop and then you're going to pull and that locks the stitches in so they will not ravel okay how beautiful is that is that not cute That is too cute. All right, now I'm going to teach you using the same technique, except with a little variation that I come up with, is a two-toned uh, flower. Okay. Now I'm test running this, so we're going to see how it works. Again, you're going to load your thread to prepare for. The stitching okay now what I'm going to use uh, for the two-toned uh, rows is I'm going to use burlap and lace it's that is as shabby chic as you can get it and I absolutely love it so I've got me a piece of four inch burlap and I'm going to get me a piece of four inch lace here's the scrap piece that I have here and I'm just going to lay the four inch square on there and then cut out around it like you see here okay once you get it cut out you can trim around it and get your accurate size just clean up your edges and what's fabulous about this is that this technique that I'm fixing to show you will lend you two roses um, to create. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do again, you're going to fold in half, kind of make the crease. Burlap is kind of tough to make a crease, but you can still do that. Okay. See, see the crease and now we're going to cut right down that crease okay like that so now we have two sections of flour one side is burlap and one side is lace all right now what you're going to do is you're going to lay the lace right on top of the burlap at about an eighth of an inch overlap okay this is the tedious part um, you're going to do a running stitch, but you've got to make sure with laces that you're always going through a thicker part of the fabric. If your lace you're using has a lot of holes and intricate uh, cutouts with it, it's going to be very difficult to do this process, um, as I have learned. And um, now what we're going to do, we're going to go through and make sure that we have a bite of fabric on every stitch as you can see there you're just gonna lap it over now I have not seen the rosettes done this way so this is totally my um, idea to fit. I was just playing around I was like mm, what if I can do two tone all right you're gonna go on down and here's a good example as you see here I've got to make sure that I touch fabric and when I come back up I'm gonna come back up into that little section there so that I know mm 
Okay, gonna There we go, and we just got a little bit more to go. There we go. All right, again, you're going to leave a tail for later pulling. Okay. Just going to tie a knot at the end of your thread. I'm sure there's an easier way to tie knots, but I've always done it this way. Okay, I'm going to load the needle. All right, just like before, we're going to fold in half and we're going to do a running stitch along the top here okay feeding through both pieces of fabric Make sure that you are biting through fabric. Just like that. And make sure you stay as taut as you can. There you go. Alright, now I've noticed here that I'm overlapped just a little bit on my burlap. And I did not go all the way to the end because I am going to trim this off. Like that. Burlap's funny, when you start working with it, it stretches. So, just keep that in mind. Alright, again, you're going to snip it off. Create your tail and load your needle once again. Okay, let me do this real quick. All right, remember if you want, I double up on my thread. needle through the loop. Now we're going to do like we did before. We're going to start in the center and I'm going to start at a thicker point in the lace. I'm going to trim off. It sits there. Okay. And you're going to do a running stitch all the way around the perimeter of the flower here. And always, always try to get, when you're working with your lace, to bite into the thicker part of the fabric. Because it will help secure it. There we go. Just like so. Okay, you're going to go all around. Do the same with the burlap. Just 
try to buy into fabric. Okay, come all around to the second side. And then meet back in the middle. Just like that. Okay. Now again, what we're going to do, leave your needle on. Make sure you find locate your two strings here at each end and then you have your middle one. And you're going to take your thumb very gently and you're going to pull that point to the center like this and then push. Okay? Just like that. And then you're going to hold it and you're going to pull on one side. Then you're going to pull a little on the other side. You're going to flip it down. And you're going to pull again. And you're going to pull on this side, just like so. Okay, once you've got your sides pulled like that, again I take the two sides and I tie them together to lock the pull. Do another knot. There we go. Then I trim off the excess. There we go. And now we're left with the string with the needle and thread and see you pull. Okay. And then you're just going to take it and tack it down. Just like you saw me do before. Now burlap is going to fray, so you got to be very gentle with it. Okay? If you like the frayed look, go for it. And then you're going to lock in your stitch. Trim it off. If you want that frayed look, pull out a few of the strands there. There you go. Kind of give it a squeeze. Shape your flower. There is a two-tone. There you go. Isn't that cute? It's absolutely wonderful. So now that you um, know how to create this flower, um, you can um, use them on any type of project, hair, um, accessories, um, any type of accessory you want to enhance or whatever. See, you can fray it a little bit and have a frayed rose, like so. it a little bit right there. Now if you want to get decorative like I did on this piece here, um, you can simply add uh, uh, pieces like this is a piece of my bling. This one's called Michaela and you can glue it right into the center of that and then you have a beautiful shabby chic flower. Um, you can do the same with your more solid colors. You can do smaller pieces of bling if you want. Um, you can uh, do pearls as you see I've done here with pearls 
and this is another piece of bling of mine you can decorate with and enjoy. You can also take an extra piece of lace like this and you can kind of scrunch it up a little bit and then trim it and then you can create a beautiful like you know fussy cut it like this Just fussy cut it no particular order of how to do it see you can make a little pretty bow on each side like that so this technique is absolutely awesome this is my version of the solid and then the two tone as you see here and I hope to see a lot of handmade rosettes in your crafting and if you do use this technique please post the pictures on my Nuke site all the links will be found below in um, the video and uh, share them and let's see what you have created let me know if you have any questions and uh, have fun thank you